Hello, everybody. Happy New Year and welcome to the Tracy Sandler Show on the Believe Podcast Network. I am joined today by my mentor, my friend, my colleague, one of my favorite humans. Oh, I thought this was Thursday. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joined today by one of my favorite people in the world, NBC Sports Bay Area's Matt Mayoko. And I was serious about all that mentor, colleague, friend. Matt, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Tracy. What a tremendous introduction. It's uh, my pleasure to join you. Thank you for finally asking me to be on your podcast. <laughs> finally. Um, it was all those bribes. And finally, we're here. It finally. must have been, you know, when we showed up at Levi Stadium on uh, Sunday, they had all these like little food things for us, including like caramel corn and cheese mm-hmm. popcorn and all that. It must have been that I rounded up all those supplies from the people who didn't show up yes. and gave them to you. That was definitely it. I was like, you know what? If he's going to feed me, I should totally have him on the podcast. This is a relatively new caught podcast. You are still one of my earlier guests. Okay. But that being said, I guess it has taken me a couple months. But I just had, you know what it is? I had to get up the courage because talking to you just, it's like, it's a big deal for me. It's, well, it's intimidating. <laughs> you know, I, I, I realized that I put off this intimidating air, very unapproachable. And so I could Good. see where, where that would be something that would kind of make you pause. Yes. But here we are. And I'm here very excited about it. Uh, there's a lot to discuss in 49er land. Uh, for those of you who are new to the Tracy Sandler show and new to me and Matt, which probably is not a lot of you, we cover the 49ers. Um, a lot going on with that team, fighting for a playoff spot. I don't know why I really like using that term. I, and when I say it, it's like I imagine all of them like running out, like <laughs> fighting, <laughs> fighting, yeah. um, fighting for a playoff. Spot. But actually, that is not completely inaccurate because they are fighting very much for a playoff spot right now. I have not have literally done. because then they'd be penalized <laughs> like throughout the game. That's true. That's true. It's a very, very good point. People would so, get ejected and it really would be counterproductive. That's true. And then they wouldn't get their playoff spot. <laughs> yeah. That would be terrible. Uh, but they are working, working for a playoff spot. Yep. Uh, they have a quarterback situation. We can call it that. Uh, and they have a lot going on. So let's discuss. Yesterday, or it'll be Sunday. I'm sorry, recording this Monday. This will go on, on Tuesday. But on Sunday, they played the the Houston Texans, who were not a, not a particularly strong opponent, though in that first half looked like they might be a stronger opponent than they should be. Trey Lance with his second ever start, rookie start off a little slow. He certainly found his stride, and and I think we saw why they picked him at three and could certainly see in the future, you know, we'll see that even more. But now they have, once again, a little bit of a situation. There's nothing you want more than a quarterback controversy going into week 18 in a game you really should win to go to the playoffs. But um, should Jimmy Garoppolo be healthy, though it doesn't really sound like he will be, what do you think happens? What did you see from Trey Lance? So many things I just threw at you. Well, I mean, he played kind of, he probably played a little bit better than I thought mm-hmm. he would. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I expected him to put some balls mm-hmm. out there that the Houston Texans could potentially intercept. That happened. Yes. I think he was maybe a little bit more accurate than I thought he would be. Um, he pushed the ball down the field. You know, like, I think I saw a stat on PFF that, you know, his, his yards – down the field was more than the 49ers had thrown down the field since Jimmy Garoppolo in 2017. Wow. 2017, of course, being the year that Garoppolo came to the 49ers late in that season, early mid season and started the final five games. Um, now the stuff that we don't see is that it was a very simplistic game plan. And mm-hmm. I don't know that we, I don't know. I could have picked up on that by watching the game or the fans picked up on that, um, I would assume no, because I mean, I, I certainly didn't, I can't tell, you know, but I I found out later that when you go into a game, you know, it's, it's usually a pretty sophisticated scheme and Mm -hmm. sophisticated game plan with a lot of checks and Hey, if this is the play call and they're doing this pre-snap read, then we switch to this. And in the course of a play, there's adjustments. You know, it's you run this pattern if they're in man coverage. You run this pattern if they're in zone. And from what I understand, it was very much a basic game plan of here's our play call Mm -hmm. and we're running the play. And, and, And whatever they're doing defensively, 
it doesn't matter because we're running that play. So from that standpoint, you know, Kyle Shanahan takes a great deal of pride and he's gets a great deal of credit or, or in football circles for uh, his his system and how it has answers for every play. And, you know, they don't audible generally, but all those all those elements are built into every single play call. Well, they kind of threw all that out the window and just said, you know, let's not clutter Trey Lance's mind with all these things he has to be thinking about. Just go out and play football. Mm -hmm. And so that's what he did. So it's it's a situation where I think where Kyle Shanahan kind of bent over a little, you know, bent over a little backwards to kind of meet Trey Lance halfway to show elements of the Kyle Shanahan offense, but certainly not even close to all the elements but also just kind of figuring what Trey Lance could handle. And I think probably the thing that stood out to me too in watching that game, and as it stood out to everybody, was that when the running game wasn't clicking, then the passing game wasn't clicking. Mm -hmm. And once the running game got going, lo and behold, the passing game got going. They were able to use play action. And then they were able to do what I talked about earlier, use Trey Lance's ability to roll out one way, mm-hmm. throw, you know, use his powerful arm to throw the other way across the field. And one thing we saw that we haven't ever seen really from Jimmy Garoppolo was those second reaction plays where yeah. you know the, the pocket starts to break out, down a little bit. Trey Lance moves out of the pocket and either makes a play with his arm or runs. And in the running part, there were some quarterback design runs, but it wasn't a huge part Mm -mm. of the plan. Certainly not like it was against Arizona in week five. So I know that's a very long answer to say, I thought Trey Lance played very well. I agree with that. And I think it's a, it was a good answer and we appreciate longevity on this podcast. <laughs> so super you came nice. to the right person, <laughs> but I do. Well, I'll branch on another time and then uh-huh. really just be, we'll be talking forever, but I love it. Uh, I, I would agree with you. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting after the game, George Kittle said, we kept basically said we kept it pretty simple, uh, which yeah. I kind of appreciated from George. You can always, you know, count on him. Just felt like it yeah, is. The funny thing is I I'd, I'd heard that, before he had said that. So I knew exactly what he was talking about when he said that, mm-hmm. that it was a pretty basic game plan and they kept it simple. And so, I, you know, to me, it was, it was a really encouraging, I mean, I almost call this his first start. I really, he, in, in a lot of ways it is. He, yeah. Cause he wasn't, you know, the one thing that I don't think a lot of people realize, and I didn't realize until the last by three mm-hmm. weeks was that his index finger, Trey Lance's index finger, was a big issue earlier in the season. And Mm -hmm. we saw how good he was early in training camp. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there was this drop off. And I do think that the drop off kind of coincided with that finger injury where Mm -hmm. he wasn't able to throw the ball as accurately. You know, Trey Lance is not a super accurate quarterback Mm -hmm. to begin with, but he's accurate enough with Mm -hmm. his athletic skills and his, his strong arm and in Kyle Shanahan's offense, guys are usually kind of running wide open yeah. uh, just the way that thing is schemed up. But I didn't realize how big of an issue his right index finger was because he couldn't bend it. Mm-hmm. You know, it and he couldn't straight, or I'm sorry, he couldn't straighten it out. And so it just kind of, it, it impacted how he gripped the football, how he threw the football. And I thought the game Sunday against the Texans, he threw the ball generally accurately. You know, every now, every now and again, one kind of gets away from him. But um, and he did give Houston a couple of opportunities to make some plays, and they did intercept him once. And uh, you know, chalk that all up to learning. I mean, I I look around the NFL at the rookie quarterbacks who've been playing a lot, and none of them are you know playing really winning football other than yeah. Mac Jones and. Right. You know, around draft time, we I think everybody kind of knew that Mac Jones would be the guy who could step in, especially if he was with a good team. Well, mm-hmm. almost entirely if he was with a good team. But he was the kind of guy who could step in and immediately have success. The, the question with all these other quarterbacks is, you know, or the thought with all these other quarterbacks, we're talking about Trevor Lawrence mm-hmm. and Zach Wilson and Trey Lance and Justin Fields, 
was that at some point, maybe early in their careers, just because of their athletic skills, that they would supersede Mac Jones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're getting more of a, at least the thought process goes, you're getting more of a finished product initially with Mac Jones. So the, so the fact that he's had success with the Patriots, I don't think is that much of a surprise. I don't think so but at all. Maybe the amount of success he's had is, but the fact that he's the best producing rookie quarterback, I don't think should be a surprise to anybody, especially the situation he landed in. Now it's it's a matter of for the other guys kind of getting them up to speed and, and having them play naturally where they're not thinking too much. And I think you you walk this fine line that we've seen all the NFL teams do, you know, with Jacksonville and, and the Jets. Those teams don't have any safety net for Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. So are those guys the struggles that they're going in? Will that beat them down? Or will that make them better? Or does it matter? Or does it not matter? And, and with Justin Fields, you know, he does have Andy Dalton there. And, you know, he's learning the game as well. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how th these guys' careers develop. Because I actually think that Kyle Shanahan knows more about Trey Lance than I do or anybody else does. Probably, like, probably. And you know a lot about everything. Well, and I also think that he <laughs> has a very, he has a better idea than I do whether Trey Lance is ready to run his system. Yes. And, and the comfortability. So I always kind of, I always kind of find it amusing when people on the outside who've never even met these people, mm -hmm. um, in the case of, Trey Lance, not, I, I guess I've met him a few times because right. I did a big story on him in the off season and all that. But I mean, I can't begin to tell you, you know, the stuff that happens behind the scenes with his knowledge of the playbook and, and if he's making the right reads and practices and all that stuff. So I just find it. Um, I mean, I, I, I defer to the head coach because he knows better than anybody who is, who has put himself in a position to go out and succeed. And as he said on Sunday, if Jimmy Garoppolo is healthy and ready to go, he is the starting quarterback week 18 against the Rams in what very well might be a win or season is over scenario. Mm -hmm. That leaves open the question, Tracy, on the Tracy Sandler show, which by the way, that has a ring to it. Thank you. Someone else said that to me recently. Thank you. Maybe, maybe it's the, is it because like the Larry Sanders show? Is that? Maybe. Maybe. But it but does. I, I it kind of does. Like I, the Tracy Sandler show sounds great. I love it. Thank um, you. But the, the thing with Jimmy Garoppolo is, I, I mean, there's no way he's going to be 100% healthy. No, but so you bring up a couple things. I want to, before we get to that, I want to just comment on one thing you just said, which I agree with, because you and I oftentimes have to be on the Twitters uh, as we tweet out news and we talk about games. I'm, I'm aware it's not actually called the Twitters, but I like to call it that. Uh, and, and we're tweeting out, you know, information about games. And I, like you, defer to Kyle Shanahan. I am of the assumption that he knows more than I do. There is a reason is he a, is the head that coach. That is a crazy assumption. I know it's crazy. I mean, he's running your offense. So <laughs> I know, I know, but I gave it to him. So I yeah. feel like now he knows more. Because <laughs> I had to like run this fangirl thing. And so we yeah. switched. <laughs> so he okay. was like, you run that. I'll run the offense. And I was like, <laughs> okay, fine. But I, I just feel that he knows more than I do. I tweeted the other day that, you know, maybe this isn't a conspiracy. Maybe Garoppolo's just hurt. And so the backup is starting. And the amount of people who told me I was crazy was unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, you know, so this idea can that... Cut, can I cut you off for just You one can. Minute? You can cut me off anytime you want. I, I made a mental health decision right around the draft when people thought that I was, um, I, I don't know what they thought I was trying to do by merely expressing my opinion that the 49ers would select you. Mac Jones. <laughs> How dare and you. And people took that so personally. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know if these are real people or not. You know, I don't know if, you know, if, if a random name followed by a bunch of numbers is something that should bother right. me. 
like the opinions of, of those Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. Um, but eventually I kind of made the, the, uh, the decision that just for my own, uh, health that I would pretty much shut down my notifications. So basically I only see stuff from people who follow or from people I follow. Which was smart. And I did not read many of my mentions or my comments because I knew, but I was like, and I normally, it's funny. I tend to stay out of this fray because again, I think Kyle Shanahan knows better than I do. I, I am also of the opinion. He's not afraid to hurt Jimmy Garoppolo's feelings. He needs to win football games. Mm -hmm. If he thought Trey Lance was the person who was going to win the football games, Trey Lance would be starting. It's it's as really to me as basic as that. So normally I stay out of the fray, but last week I was like, this is ridiculous. There is not a conspiracy theory going on in this building. You do not have the quarterback being like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. We can totally just fake it. She's like, this is not what's happening here. And so, and I looked at like one comment and I was like, I'm no longer, but the one comment I saw, and I thought this was great just from a anecdotal thing to make you laugh was someone saying, maybe just maybe you're biased towards the players. I was like, I don't even, I don't, I even don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, I don't know what that means either. <laughs> so, because I'm biased for the players, I don't think they're faking injuries. Okay, cool. What? But this well, is- I mean, he, here's what I do think happened: was that, um, you know, Kyle Shanahan came out on Monday after the Thursday game mm-hmm. and said that Jimmy Garoppolo had a thumb sprain. Right. And you you hear thumb sprain, and you know anyone who's been I, and I built, I'm not in the medical field, but I've covered, I've covered enough <laughs> injuries to know that a thumb sprain or a sprain period is an injury to the ligament. That means the ligament is torn mm-hmm. either partially or completely. And so, but most people hear a sprain and they, it, it doesn't really sound that jarring. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's a sprain. Unless yeah. it's a high ankle sprain, which apparently but that's is, like the most there, jarring. Yes. So then what happened was... And we don't have to speculate too much about how this information got out, but let's just say that people Mm -hmm. who had Jimmy Garoppolo's best interests at heart Mm -hmm. made it known to the national media that this just wasn't any kind of sprain. This was a very significant sprain and where a fleck of the, you know, a chip, a part of the bone where the ligament attaches came off. And so you know, why would that information get out? Well, clearly because Jimmy Garoppolo will more than likely be with a new team Mm -hmm. this next season Um, from Jimmy Garoppolo's standpoint or those associated with Garoppolo, they want him to land with a new team and sign a new contract, uh, thus creating more job security. They also want it known that as tough as he was to, to battle through that game Thursday against the Tennessee Titans, there were reasons why he did not have a good game. And there mm-hmm. were reasons why he threw that interception, but there's also the toughness aspect. In fact, you know, one of the, one of the reports was, you know, he's going to try to gut it out on Sunday against the Houston Texans. Well, when you're talking about a thumb ligament, like not being attached I'm not sure gutting it out is the right answer for trying to help your team win a football game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so the other part of this is that Kyle Shanahan has said, uh, you know, from what he understands, he won't need surgery. Right. Well, that I'm sure is coming from the 49ers team doctors. Right. And now Jimmy Garoppolo and his side have to go out and get other opinions and say, okay, what's going to be, the best chance for long-term success. In other mm-hmm. words, if you don't get that, if you don't get that surgery, how long is it going to take for that ligament to heal on its own? Mm-hmm. And then once it heals, is it still going to be um, functional like it was pre-injury? So, it, from what I understand, it's uh, you know it's a couple month surgery basically, or recovery, or six weeks, or something like that. Okay. So. The last thing Garoppolo wants is for any kind of complications with that thumb that makes him not as effective for the 2022 season Mm -hmm. as he could be. Um, And also, you know, if he does end up with a new team early in the offseason, say in March, he's going to want to be able to take part in the first 
team get togethers and, Mm -hmm. and, and practice and do all those things and assert himself. So there's a lot kind of at play here behind the scenes, but but I'm I'm uh, 100% certain that Jimmy Garoppolo did not fake a thumb injury. No chance. I'm, I am 100% certain that um, that the 49ers went with Trey Lance because they felt like Jimmy Garoppolo could not perform up to the, the level that he had played for most of this season. And now the question becomes. It, it, will he be anywhere near close? It, we, he, and Kyle Shanahan even said he doesn't have to be 100%. He doesn't have to be. Yeah. But he has to be at a percentage where the 49ers determine. It might be he might not even be able to throw a football. We don't know. Right. We don't know. He has it. So, you know, Kyle Shanahan, Shanahan had said yesterday he doesn't know if he threw on Sunday, but he had not thrown Saturday. So yeah. that's a that's an important part of quarterbacking is throwing. Yeah, football. It's pretty, pretty important. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, when, when Jimmy went out and threw a little bit on Wednesday, he felt good. He felt optimistic. And when he met with us, this was even before he mm-hmm. went out the throw, he was yes. optimistic. He sounded like he felt like he had a pretty decent chance of, of playing. And so from what I understand after he threw and I don't know if he pushed it real hard, but he felt great. You know, he felt like, Hey, I can do this. And then Thursday was a different story. Thursday yeah. was like, uh Oh, you know, this isn't good. So now we know he's not going to be a hundred percent. Kyle Shanahan says he doesn't have to be 100%. He just has to be able to grip a football, throw it and throw it effectively and confidently. So then it comes into at what percentage does Garoppolo have to be to go out there, play effective winning football while running Kyle Shanahan's entire offense to still be better than Trey Lance going out there with two career starts, not running the entire offense as Kyle Shanahan has designed it. And what that number is, I don't know. Is it is it 85%? I don't know what it is, but I would just say that um, I'm not super convinced at all that Jimmy Garoppolo will be able to play on Sunday. And if he does play and he doesn't play effectively, then that would open up Kyle Shanahan, obviously, to the most second guessing he has received since he became coach of the 49ers. Which is saying a lot because he's this last season has received quite a bit of second guessing, but you did lead me in to the next thing I wanted to discuss as we look towards that Rams game and you bring up a lot of good points. So you can have a very simplistic, I mean, simplistic, not to me, but simplistic for them. Cause for me, it would still be a very difficult game plan, but you can have a very simplistic game plan. Well, let's see them try to like script and run the Tracy Sandler show. <laughs> I think that's a very good point. I dare you, Kyle, you've been challenged. Come on the train. I mean, there's all the, the whole contraption, the video <laughs> setup, all that. I, yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Good we, know, luck. we know how much Kyle Shanahan hates Zoom. Yes, so. exactly. So I just, I just like imagine him throwing the headphones and being like, I'm over this. Yeah. Um, going we back to some the- little kid walks up to him. and <laughs> That was so crazy. Let's talk about that for a second. Well, I- this little kid, for those of you who missed it. A little kid somehow got on the field and walks up to Kyle Shanahan. There's a picture, actually, uh, when I was doing my story yesterday. There is a photo of this kid standing between Debo Samuel and Trey Lance, just on, on the field. On the field. Now, how do, could you tell how old this kid is? He we looked... a little kid. He's a little kid. I mean, he looked to me... Like 14? I younger? looked to be a little bit younger. He okay. looked to be a little bit... He looks to be like my nephew who's 12. So I would okay. say maybe 11 or 12. It wasn't your nephew, was it? It wasn't. It definitely was not my nephew. Okay. I do not want him to get in trouble. It definitely wasn't my nephew. Um, but yeah, he looked to me like probably 12-ish. But I, I don't know how that happens. And then I had so many questions like, is it the parents that get in trouble? Like, are they banned from the stadium? Is this poor kid at 12 never allowed to go to Levi Stadium again? I have a lot of follow-ups <laughs> that I need to answer. Yeah, and we don't know who this kid is. Yeah, we mm. don't know the parental How situation. does it even happen? Like, I just don't even know how that happens. That, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it was something um, – I'm assuming this happened in the fourth quarter? It was in the fourth quarter, yes. Yeah, so you know how 
I do this, Tracy. I I was completely oblivious to all that because at the start of the fourth quarter, I actually pack up all my belongings from the press box Mm -hmm. and I go down to where our press room is underneath Levi's Stadium, underneath the, what is that, the East uh, stands there. Because I have to do the 40 hours post game show. I have to do a hit like right after the game's over. I'm live on TV. So I have to be down there. And so I'm just like watching. Humble brag. Humble brag. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm watching the final quarter on a TV mm-hmm. in the press room. And I don't think it was. And while I'm writing to send a story as soon as the game's over. Right. I, I don't think they showed that on TV. So I had. No idea what I believe it was Eric Branch who asked the question. I think it was wasn't it Barrows? Was it Barrows? Okay, I I thought- well because it was Barrows. Uh, our colleague Matt Barrows, who also friend of the pod, he has been uh, he has been a guest on the Tracy Sandler show. Uh, be- just before me, through, before you. Yep. Well, you know you have to. Oh, mass. when you go through your match, you go B first before him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a very we're very alphabetical, literally by the book on this show. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's the one who noticed it. Because I was didn't see it either because Jen, our other colleague, and I were also going down to the press room. We usually go down with about six or seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. So I didn't see it, but I saw it on Twitter, and it was Matt who noticed it in his binoculars. He's like, is there a kid on the field with Kyle Shanahan? And that's how that all played out. Wow. Yeah, so we'll get have to get to the bottom of that. We will have to get to the bottom. So many, so many follow-up questions. But the picture that I found uh, was – it was just amazing because he's literally standing between Debo Samuel and Trey Lance on the field and the kids wearing a Jersey. So it all, when you first look at it, it almost doesn't look weird. And then you're like, wait a minute, who is that? I, I did For see change. a video, I think from someone who took video from that would be the North end zone. Okay. So it appeared as if the kid had come from the stands on the East side and went across the field, basically through the 49ers huddle to get to Kyle Shanahan. That's just, that's amazing. That isn't a, just, it's amazing. Yeah. Good for that kid. He'll have that memory forever. And 30 years from now, when someone wants to take him to a 49ers game, be like, I can't go because when I was 12, yeah. I yeah, sat my, on the field. My picture's still on the wall there. I can't yeah. go. I can't go, but you know, still, it was great. It was a, it was a great experience. But so back to, to back to Sunday. So this, the simplistic offense uh, works against the Texans. You now have a Rams team that would like to win the division and has a chance to do so. You have a Rams team that has been very much owned by Kyle Shanahan, the 49ers, and probably is not super thrilled about it. Uh, and a very talented Rams team that has a lot to play for. Does this work? And I think that probably goes into the discussion we were thinking earlier. How high a percentage does Jim Higaropolo have to be? Because I would have to imagine, and I'm sure Twitter would kill me for this. I actually would have to imagine that a healthy Jim Higaropolo. What did you say? Violent Twitter. (laughs) Violent Twitter. Maybe, um, you know, uh, figuratively. Okay. Not like really good, but like. Unlashing. Unlashing. There we go. Um, I, I would imagine that a healthy Jimmy Garoppolo is the better way to go uh, against this Rams team. I could be wrong because, again, I don't coach the team. So this now becomes an issue because you have a 49ers team that has a variety of issues at corner, which we can certainly talk about. You have a 49ers team that, though they played well yesterday, special teams could fall apart at any moment on on any play. Uh, and – You have a very strong defense, but now you have a team that it's going to be, do I go with the quarterback that's maybe 65% healthy, but he can grip the ball and throw it? Or do we go with the quarterback that's 100% healthy, but now his third start is could very well be a win or go home game? Right, and maybe where the offense can only do 65% of what they do. So is a 65% Jimmy Garoppolo with 100% of the playbook better than 100% Trey Lance with 65% of the Trey Lance? Man, that's the age old question. I might have to, I might have to steal that line. (laughs) uh, But you can just credit me. (laughs) Well, I did kind of lead you into it though. Uh, Did you? That was kind of a collaborative effort, I think. It was. So maybe you could credit us. (laughs) Okay, there we go. Uh, as as I spoke about on the Tracy Sandler show. <laughs> that's fine. That's close enough. Um, I'll take it. You guys should listen to it because that's where the pearls of wisdom truly come out. You know what? This whole playoff thing, um, several weeks ago, 
if you would ask me, would the 40 hours make the playoffs with a nine and eight record right now? They're mm-hmm. nine and seven. I would have mm-hmm. said, absolutely. No question about it. Then the saints went and beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on a Sunday night. Mm-hmm. And that's when things changed where it was like, Oh my goodness, this is not. And, and all the percentages kept having the, the 49ers at like 75% playoff. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at that going, I don't think so. Like if I were a betting man, I'm not sure I would have the 49ers in the playoffs Mm -hmm. because you just had to look at the teams that the, the other teams were playing. Mm -hmm. I mean, as much as people are lamenting how the 49ers blew it against the Tennessee Titans. It was a tough game. It was always going to be a tough game. In Nashville. That was the one game this entire season where when the schedule came out, I said, well, they'll definitely lose that game. Now, of course it played out and they could have, won that game, but Jimmy Garoppolo had a busted up thumb Mm -hmm. and they lost to a team on the road on a short week with a two time zone flight Mm -hmm. that right now are, they're the number one seed in the, in the playoffs. Yeah. (laughs) So there's really no, you know, no embarrassment losing that game and the games they should have won were the games earlier in the season. But I mean, as I look at this thing right now, to me, you know, who has the best chance of making it and being the final, you know, the seventh seed, or at least the, the final of the seven playoff teams? To me, it's the Saints. Oh, it is for sure. Yeah, there's no question because the 49ers I mean, just look at let's look at this objectively with you know the Vegas betting lines right now. Mm-hmm. The the Saints are a three and a half point favorite to beat the Falcons. Mm-hmm. And the Rams are a six and a half point favorite to beat the 49ers. So the 49ers, um, they're still, I guess, of the four possible scenarios, uh, 49ers win, Saints win. 49ers lose, Saints win. 49ers win, Saints lose. I don't know. Did I hit all the scenarios? Whatever I think it is. that was. I, or Is there another scenario? Or, or if they, or, both, they lose. both lose. If they, they both, both lose. lose. So <clears throat> with those four scenarios, three of the scenarios, the 49ers get in. So Mm -hmm. that way you could say, oh, 75% chance the 49ers get in because three of the four scenarios. But as we sit here, fresh off the 49ers, 23-7 victory over the Texans, fresh off the Saints, eight-point victory over the Panthers, Mm -hmm. the most likely scenario is the one scenario where the 49ers don't make the playoffs. I hate to say this. I, I don't think they're going to beat the Rams on Sunday. I I, I don't think so either. I really don't. Like, I just if, think... If they do, I, I, I would be super impressed. I would be super impressed too. Because also at a certain point, you know, it's like that when people are like, well, he's gone 84 passes without an interception. I'm like, well, then he's due to throw an interception. Yeah. You know, they've, they're, it's 5-0 and against Sean McVay. This is... This isn't the game they win. I, I hate to say that. And hopefully I'm wrong. And you guys, I'm happy to be wrong. But I don't think this is the game they win. So now Kyle I, I Shanahan, think, I think they can keep it close. They can. I, I think they can. I think they can make a game out of it. I think the 49ers have enough star power, but they need you know Nick Bosa, Fred Warner. Uh, they need uh, uh, Trent Williams to mm-hmm. just have you know who uh, also might game. be hurt at the moment. <laughs> well, know? I noticed he didn't. He didn't play the final three snaps of that he game. He did not, and and I think that. You know, Kyle said yes uh, Sunday something about an elbow sprain. So by the time this airs, we'll have a better idea of that. Yeah. But they do they do have all that star power, but they have all these issues that we've discussed. I mean, and we, I didn't finish mentioning all the stars. Oh so, yes, I'm sorry. Please well, continue. Debo Samuel, George yes. Kittle. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, and man, is Elijah Mitchell kind of turning into a star? I think he does. I think I Elijah mean, Mitchell gets kinda. star. Yeah. Um, so they have enough star power, and if those stars play up to their star level, Fort Niners can can hang in there, and they can beat any team in the league. But it's a tough ask for them to go into a game without knowing, you know, who their quarterback is going to be, or maybe they do know who their quarterback is going to be. But in either way, their quarterback is going to be compromised. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, with all the stuff that we're talking about, it's either going to be a physical, you know, being compromised physically 
or being compromised in the sense that that quarterback is inexperienced and doesn't isn't able to execute the offense as Kyle Shanahan has designed it. And, you know, interesting yesterday, uh, Josh Norman was benched after that, that DPI call, uh, Dante Johnson came in promptly got a, a PI call of his own, but then, you know, then played relatively well. We're seeing Ambry Thomas certainly improve, but they got a real situation at corner against a Rams offense that, Yes, Matthew Stafford loves throwing interceptions. Well, he may not love it, but I don't he, think does he, it. It. he probably doesn't love it, but he does it a lot. Um, and you have you have Cooper Cup. And so if all those stars that you mentioned aren't superstars on every play, th- things can go wrong. There's a chance the 49ers get Emmanuel Mosley back on Sunday. But kind of back to what we were saying about percentage of health, you know, Kyle Shanahan has said repeatedly they'd be lucky to get him back Sunday, mm-hmm. which means if he's back, he probably isn't going to be 100%, which maybe nobody is right now. So they just got a lot. There are a lot of things that could go wrong. So all the stars really have to be stars, I feel like, on every single play. And that is a very big ass. Now, that's why they get paid. That's why they're in the NFL. But it is a big ass nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, and the thing, probably one of the more fascinating parts of this season for the 49ers to me or interesting, or I don't know how I want to term, maybe just surprising is that, I mean, we can look at it and say that, you know, Josh Norman is well past his prime Mm -hmm. and Dante Johnson got a lot of first team reps from what I understand in practice last week. So they were just kind of like, okay, next opportunity, next Mm -hmm. chance that, that Josh Norman does something, you know, grab someone or, PI or something, we're going to make that move. And they did. Mm -hmm. The thing that is just so shocking to me is how the 49ers by and large, and this doesn't factor in all those yardage uh, and penalties, but the 49ers have one of the best pass defenses in the league. It's really incredible. Actually, It is incredible. (laughs) And obviously a lot of it has to do with the pass rush. And, but in, um, but they just don't have, you know, the, the top players outside. I mean, basically they're the two guys that they thought gave the team a really good chance of having a very good secondary are not out there. And Jason Brett was going to be the lockdown guy. And he had a very good 2020 season. They re-signed him. He's back. And then he gets injured first game of the year. And this is a mm-hmm. guy who's ultra talented, but just mm-hmm. has been uh, incredibly unlucky with the injuries. You know, they signed Josh Norman the week leading into that first game to be the number three corner. Well, he has now started all 14 games in mm-hmm. which he has appeared. And so he's had to be more than just a, a backup cornerback. He's, mm-hmm. he's a full-time starter, maybe not any longer. Maybe it's Dante Johnson's turn. Ambry Thomas, hey, look, he, he's clearly missing the year last year sitting out. Yeah. Uh, as an opt uh, opt out at Michigan, hurt him. Blue. How they do in the? Okay, you know what? Listen, they got there. It was a magical, Hold amazing up. season, and I'm so proud of them. Okay, as well you should be. So they but, that game didn't even count. It was like a bonus bonus okay. game. Mm-hmm. That's, keep telling yourself that. Yeah, that's okay, where I'm going. So, but I mean, Ambry <laughs> Thomas needs to improve his strength. Yes. Um, and and probably a lot more, but he's done okay. He's, he's done, done okay. He's considering he's done, he's done okay. He's done okay. Considering and he's gotten he's, better. I will say that for him. Oh yeah. He has yeah. improved because you know there are players who go out there and they do okay and then they regress or they just never get better. And he is getting better. Yeah, and, but this, as you mentioned, this is a tough, tough, this ask. Is a tough. Yeah. And and um, but I say that every game. You know, I say that mm-hmm. when they go in and play against Joe Burrow. And mm-hmm. they only allowed, I think, one touchdown, right, against Joe Burrow? Mm-hmm. Or was it two? It might have been two. Uh, no, it might have been one. Whatever. I think it was just one. I think yeah. it was just one. And, and then Joe Burrow, two weeks later, you know, has whatever, the fifth highest passing game in the history of the NFL. Right. You know, I thought the same thing about Brian Tannehill. And, and yes, the 40 you know, did not play well on third downs. But, you know, they, they didn't. They, and A.J. Brown had a big game. But mm-hmm. they didn't. It's not like the 49ers are giving up 400 yards passing every game. In fact, they're no, giving they're up not. about half that. 
you know, they are, they're probably right around like top five in the league as far as passing yards Mm -hmm. uh, given up, which is shocking to me because if they, I mean, if we just listen to what people are telling us and just gone on perception, we'd think that they'd be, you know, 30 or 31 or 32 ranked pass defense in the league. And that hasn't been the case. So anyway, they're doing enough good things. They're switching things up. I think Jimmy Ward probably doesn't get enough credit oh, for, for just sure. kind of keeping things together back there because there's a lot of chaos with with the the cornerback situation and the rookies thrown in there for a little bit and then they get out and now Ambry Thomas is in and Josh Norman can't run with these top flight guys. So they have to play a lot of zone and have to disguise a lot of coverages. And, and so probably Jimmy Ward and D'Amico Ryans are, are doing about as well as you possibly could to keep those passing numbers down for the opposition. I think that's true. And I actually asked uh, Kyle and Fred Warner a couple weeks ago about D'Amico Ryans, because there's another person who I think really does not get enough credit. It's actually pretty amazing what he's done with this defense considering, yeah. in and my I, opinion. I, and I asked um, someone uh, high up in the 49ers organization whether there's any concern that D'Amico Ryans could get a head coaching job this mm-hmm. season. And I, I don't know that there is at all, but they also thought that, you know, he probably needs a little bit more time as a defensive coordinator. But there was also a thought of if some team decides they're going to interview him, even though they might not necessarily think that he's the guy they want, he's the kind of guy who could go into an interview setting and kind of blow you away Mm -hmm. and end up with a job that nobody expected him to end up getting this early in his coaching career. So I am more convinced than ever that D'Amico Ryans will be a head coach in the NFL. And I think I'm more convinced than ever that that time is going to come sooner than I thought it would when he got yeah. promoted to defensive coordinator in the off season. I could not agree with you more. I really could not agree with you more. Wouldn't it be something if he went to the jets and then Robert Sala came back? I'm just making that up. There's no way yeah, that's going to happen. It just sounded like a fun think. thing to yeah, say. Yeah. And I don't, you know, here's the thing. Like I, I have you heard anything about Robert Sala? I, no. And I yeah. think I don't, this is, I, people have asked me if I think it's going to be a one and done season. It's absolutely not. No, I don't when, think that at all. G- generally, this is what happens. I, I tell, I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it again for the listeners of the Tracy Sandler show. Appreciate you. I, I just like saying Tracy Sandler show. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, tell yeah. your friends. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. I, whenever a coach is a one and done, it's never because of the results on the field. 100%. Amen. It's, it, it's never because it's other things. It's it's lost the locker room. It's mm-hmm. it's just isn't cut out to be a head coach. It's his systems do not work. He did not put together a good coaching staff. He um, he's he's not cut out for it. Whatever. There's there's reasons because you know and we've seen it you know we've seen oh, it we sure with, have. with the 49ers i mean heck we've seen you know uh, successful head coaches get pushed out for reasons that had nothing to do with the win loss record mm-hmm. um it, go, it had go blue. Go blue. It, it had stuff to do with dysfunction <laughs> within the organization mm-hmm. as long as a head coach is you know has the respect of the locker room and the organization the, the the wins and losses don't necessarily matter early on unless the wins and losses are a direct reflection on the coach's ability to lead or to put the the pieces in place to maximize uh, the talents of a team. But the last thing the Jets want to do with a rookie quarterback is just start switching. And and so I, I just, I don't get the sense at all that, that Robert Sala is, you know, it is not at all. I mean, he's a long term answer. And I mean, on the short term, who expected that team to be successful? <laughs> Certainly not I. Well, that's that's what I don't understand when people ask me that question. I mean, did you think he was gonna come in year one with this rookie quarterback and after everything that's gone with the Jets and just like contend? That was never on yeah, the and, table. <laughs> and you know, like in, in twenty seventeen when Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch came in together. I mean, Kyle Shanahan mm-hmm. made it quite clear to Jed York that your team sucks. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, you're going to have to convince me to come to your team. Right. basically. 
And Jed York says, okay, how about a six year contract? Done. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. So, you know, when, when you look at, you know, say Jim Harbaugh, for instance, Jim Harbaugh came into a really good situation. Now, nobody expected him to year win year one because of the lockout and all that. But he had tremendous talent on that team that just wasn't maximized under the previous regime. Mm -hmm. So to compare Kyle Shanahan coming in to a complete rebuild and Jim Harbaugh coming in to a ready-made team, it's apples and oranges. And, um, you know, Jim Harbaugh was consistently better um, and got to the Super Bowl year two. I mean, it was a incredible feat that that John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan made it to the Super Bowl in year three. And I don't know how much you credence you want to pay on you know put on last season where it was just a crazy year. But you know, if, if things fall right for the 49ers, they will. If if they can somehow pull this thing out and get into the playoffs, you know, they'll be well. They're guaranteed an over five hundred record. Mm-hmm. So Either way. I, yeah. So I just, I don't, I think that, um, you know, after the Super Bowl of 2019, 2020 certainly didn't go the way they wanted. And no. this season hasn't gone the way it wanted, but um, it's not, I, I just don't know that anything has to change. No. I mean, I wouldn't, someone asked me that yesterday on the Twitter, but someone said, if they don't make the playoffs, is he on the hot seat? And I said, absolutely not. Like that's not, nothing has to change. Like, this also is football. It's it's the NFL. There's also a factor these last two seasons and the 49ers have avoided it for the most part. Uh, but there's, there's a COVID factor. There's just a lot that has gone on and, you know, I get it. Fans want, you know, they want a Super Bowl every year, which is completely unrealistic, but these are tough games and the other teams get paid too. I, I've, and, I've done some math. Yeah. The average NFL team, on average, a team should go to the Super Bowl one every 16 years. Wow. On, on average, a team should win the Super Bowl once every 32 years. Well, under I, that. I came up with those numbers because there's 32 teams in the NFL mm-hmm. and there are 16 teams in each conference. So good numbers. Thank you. And and so here we are in year five of Shanahan and Lynch, and they've already been to the Super Bowl. And and clearly you're not going to stick around. Uh, No team's going to give a coach 32 years to go win a Super Bowl. Um, I don't think. That would be something. That would be be amazing. Uh, 27 years from now, Shanahan holding up his trophy. I'll I'll sign up for that one. Like, hey, (laughs) Matt, you're hired. You get a 32-year contract. But we're telling you, if you don't win a Super Bowl year 32, you're out. Like, okay. I would leave this Tracy Sandler show for that contract. No offense to my listeners who I love. But if I was given that contract, I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. Why not? Let's do it. So anyway, I guess the the I don't know if there was a point. I was going to say the point is, but I don't think there really was a point. Other than, I I don't think, regardless of what happens, that this season is a waste. I think there are plenty of pieces in place for the future. Mm-hmm. I think that we won't know entirely about Trey Lance for probably a while. I mean. Quarterbacks don't max out until, I don't know, year six, seven, eight. Now, we know year three, four, five, mm-hmm. probably, if, if that player is going to be a good player. But I'm of the opinion that the improvements, well, let's put it this way. I don't think that any young quarterback can just sit for basically a full season and develop behind the scenes. I think it Mm -hmm. takes a certain kind of person to continually push themselves and to challenge themselves and probably have a good supporting cast. You know, guys like Fred Warner on the team Mm -hmm. on the other side of the ball saying, Hey, you need to do that. You know, it it takes, and it it also takes a starting quarterback who's a true pro to help bring that guy along. Mm -hmm. Everything I see is that Trey Lance Luckily for him, fortunately for him, checks all those boxes. You know, he yeah. has somebody that he can watch in Jimmy Garoppolo who watched Tom Brady, 
Mm-hmm. He has a, a really good group of teammates supportive around him. Mm-hmm. He's got very good coaching and he's got this inner desire to not just be good. I mean, I think he wants to be great. He wants and to be great it, for sure. And watching him on Sunday in a game where it could have gone horribly wrong, he stuck with it. It never looked like he was cowering or wilting under the pressure. Those are the games that I think where there's the most pressure. Is Absolutely. The games, the games where you have to win against an inferior team. So I do think that the Trey Lance that we saw week 17 was dramatically better than the Trey Lance we saw week five. And I think the Trey Lance we see week one of the 2022 season will be so much better than the Trey Lance we would have seen this season had he just been thrown in, thrown to the wolves, or Mm -hmm. as uh, we've said on 49ers Talk, Laura Brett, I'll give her credit for this. She was talking about the 49ers throwing Trey Lance week one to the Lions. Oh, I see what 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 she she did did there. Yeah, Laura, she's very clever. Yeah, so I do think that, I do think that the Trey Lance, because people are like, well, he hasn't hardly played So his rookie year is going to be next season. I completely disagree with that. I think he will be so far ahead in year two of all the rookie quarterbacks who started week one, what they were back in in 2021. So I I think that the goal for this season for the 49ers with the the good players they have, the veteran guys on one-year contracts, The goal this season was to maximize the year and Mm -hmm. to win as many games as possible. And I think that obviously the season hasn't gone the way any of the fans had hoped, any of the players or coaches or the organization had hoped, but all you can do is give yourself the best chance. And I think the best chance that they had of winning the season was with Jimmy Garoppolo and playing, you know, playing from, from week one until he couldn't play anymore. Right. And, and I, I don't think that when you look back at this season, you'll say if the 49ers don't make the playoffs, I don't think you'll say they didn't make the playoffs because of their quarterback. I, I don't think that. Not at all. I think there are plenty of other reasons, but I think on the list of reasons why they didn't make the playoffs – Quarterback is well down that list. Garoppolo played well enough, by and large, for the 49ers to be a playoff team. And I think you're going to have plenty of people that say, well, if Lance has started, you have no idea. What you do know are the issues, the other issues. Those are tangible. You can point to them. Other things that have happened, you have no idea what what would have happened. So I hate to say this, but I agree with you wholeheartedly. Now, why do you hate to say that you agree? Just because I like to say that to tease you. Because I really don't hate to say that. Because I do very much respect you and like what I agree with you. But I do agree with you wholeheartedly. This, the Tracy Sandler show has taken a dramatic turn from all of the uh, bouquets and blowing kisses to me at the beginning to now saying you hate to agree with me. No, but I was just kidding because I oh. don't hate to agree with you. And I really agree with you that the, if they don't make the playoffs, there are a lot of reasons that are real reasons that could be pointed to. It is not the quarterback situation. And people can say till they're blue in the face, well, if Lance had started week one, you have no, not you, the I, universal I, you has no idea. I I have no idea. Nobody else has any idea, but I would suspect that um, I would suspect that the win loss record would probably be worse. I agree. And that's not a knock on Trey Lance. It's just reality because you look at, look at what's gone on around the league. It'll be interesting to see too, because I do think, you know, it's something John Lynch said at the time when he was drafted, Trey Lance came into a really, good situation that does not happen a lot of times when the number three pick in the draft, you know, as a quarterback. And so Trevor Lawrence probably went into the, not probably, I think went into the worst possible situation you could go into. Yeah. Uh, Well, I mean, geez. Yeah. Just that. Literally. I mean, that was the worst. I think Zach Wilson's in a better situation, but it's, you know, we'll see what happens over the next several years. So, you know, here's what I think, Tracy, I I think that, that this if, if Trey Lance plays week 18 and the 49ers fall on their faces, they lose, he doesn't play well. They don't make the playoffs. 
I still think that that experience is will be beneficial to him, especially because it's coming off a good experience like he had against the Texans. Yes. So he will not go into the offseason wondering, can I do this? Like he now knows I can do this. I can go up against an NFL defense and help my team get a win in my second start. Now, the, regardless of how the game at SoFi turns out, again, if he falls flat on his face, it, it'll be good for him to go into that kind of environment and maybe get punched in the face a little bit, but not get any, not any of those lasting scars of it happening right. week after week after week, like it's happened to Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. So there will be people of the opinion of if the 49ers don't make the playoffs, this season was a waste. They didn't play Trey Lance as much as they should have. This They're just starting from scratch. 2021 was just rip it up. Terror. It never happened. 49ers mismanaged the situation. And I just don't think that that's the case at all. I, you know, when they drafted him, when they, when they gave up tons of draft capital to move up and get him, they did not do it for the 2021 season. We all know that. And, they, they, and they've said that. They have flat out said that. And they didn't even do it for 2022. You know, no. they, did, they did it for, I don't know, probably, well, I mean, I guess they'd like to see something. I mean, and put it this way. Patrick Mahomes was, uh, you know, the, the Kansas City traded up to get him. They kept mm-hmm. Alex Smith at quarterback. Alex Smith had a very good season. And the Chiefs, you know, but the Chiefs did not make it to the Super Bowl at the end of that rookie season for Mahomes, where Mahomes only attempted like 35 passes. Mm -hmm. They made the decision that we saw, Andy Reid made the decision, we saw enough from Patrick Mahomes behind the scenes that he is ready to take over next year. So that's much like what the 49ers are doing in evaluating of Trey Lance. And then Mahomes goes out, in his first full year as a starter, which was his second year in the league, and throws for 5,000 yards, 50 <laughs> touchdowns. And now, you know, he, he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback, bringing up bad memories to the people Sorry, watching guys. and listening to this podcast. <laughs> but that's kind of the template of this for Trey Lance. It wasn't, let's go win a Super Bowl year one, he's going to push us over the top as a rookie. It was, this is a long term deal. And if the 49ers have their quarterback for the next 10 years and there's no question and Kyle Shanahan can handpick him and clearly Jimmy Garoppolo has been a good quarterback for the 49ers, but there's been stuff that has obviously frustrated Kyle Shanahan. So if Kyle Shanahan can go pick the guy he wants and have that guy for a long time, then the trade they could have given up three more first round draft picks and it. and it would have been worth it because I mean, all I do is look at the new England Patriots and the one constant through their years and years of winning up until this year where they're winning again mm-hmm. was Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did not capitalize, you know, they did not have great drafts. They didn't add great players in the drafts. They just had Tom Brady. They fit, they, they found people on both sides of the ball that fit their systems Whenever a guy got too good and <laughs> demanded too much money, they'd get rid of him and yep. bring someone else in. So the <laughs> one constant is, you know, if, if Tom Brady, if the, if the Patriots had traded, you know, 12 first round draft picks for Tom Brady, when they ended up getting him in the, was it sixth round or fifth round? Mm-hmm. Or they got him the sixth round. Sixth sixth round. round. If they had done that and everybody would have been saying, oh my God, that's the worst thing ever. And obviously it would have been because they could have had him later in the draft, but they picked him in the first round and given up all that draft capital, you know, all those Super Bowl laters, everybody be saying that was brilliant. And so we'll see. Um, I, I just, I, I kind of get, um, you know, for anyone who wants to draw these great, these great um, pronouncements on Trey Lance based on his first start or his second start or his third start, you're, you, you must like, Hussein Bolt and not the great marathon runner, because this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And um, whether it turns out 
that it was a good trade or not. We'd only be guessing. Check back with me in about six or seven years, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll have a much better idea. I uh, going back to something you said earlier. I'm going to make a prediction for Sunday. I think Trey Lance will play well. I do not think he will fall on his face. He may make mistakes. I don't think he'll fall on his face. And should they lose that game, it will not be because of Trey Lance. It will just be because the Rams were better and played better. So that's my prediction for Sunday. Yeah, uh, um, I would kind of agree with you. That's okay. We don't have to agree on everything. No, we don't. But I do think that at that position, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, it's not a coincidence that the 49ers are undefeated when Jimmy Garoppolo did not throw an interception and the 49ers had, well, like a one in six record when Garoppolo threw an interception. So if there's a, if there's a position on the field who can swing the momentum of the game to the positive or to the negative, it's the quarterback position. So, so I would not go so far as to say that if the 49ers lose, it won't be Trey Lance's fault because he, some of those passes that he put up there for the defenders to get their hands on Sunday against the Texans, if the Rams make those plays and he ends up throwing two or three interceptions. Well, that's yes. Yeah. But I guess I'm just saying, I think, I think there are a lot, I agree with you. That position of course is the one that will, that can swing it either way, but all things being equal, I just feel like I do think the Rams are going to win. And I just think it's ultimately going to be because they are a better team. Um, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I can't I can't disagree with you, and you know, and Vegas agrees with you. I mean, six yes. and a half points is a pretty significant point spread. I think both quarterbacks will throw an interception. I mm-hmm. maybe two. I think that I do, I do think that I do think that will happen. I just feel like I look at it's kind of what we went said earlier. The 49ers can stay in it, and the 49ers can keep it close. And listen, the, the difference may end up being that Matthew Stafford can make the play that Trey Lance can't make yet. I just don't think he's going to fall on his face. That's my feeling. Yeah. I, I don't I, think he's going to fall on his face because I, I think, yes, uh, Sunday's game, once he threw that interception, it was an opportunity for him to go one way or the other. Mm-hmm. He could have totally folded, could have totally – a different person could have been scared. I'm a rookie – and giving himself a break, but that's not what happened. Yeah. And, and I, it, yeah. I do think just the limited time I've been around him and, and, you know, met his family and his college coaches and his high school coaches and close friends and all that. I just kind of get this sense with him and also kind of watching him play out just his body language and everything else. Mm-hmm. I, I do think that he won't be, uh, he won't be paralyzed in the moment you know, it it won't, you know, the the saying it's not too big for him. I don't think Mm -hmm. it's too big for him. And if he does have one of these stinker of a games and he is the reason or part of the reason the 49ers lose on Sunday, I think that his drive and determination will make him better. Like he will be back Mm -hmm. in the weight room. He'll be back in the film room the next day. And he will be determined to not let something like that happen to him again. But no, I, I think that, I mean, at this point, I think I would be surprised if Garoppolo suits up and plays. I do mm-hmm. think, I do think it'll be Trey Lance out there. And uh, yeah, I was excited um, Saturday night to, uh, you know, to go to the stadium, Levi mm-hmm. stadium for the home finale and kind of see what Trey Lance was about. Cause we hadn't seen him. You know, we don't yes. at this point in the year after the what is it after the second preseason game, we're not allowed as media to watch practices. Mm-hmm. So we hadn't seen him since the week five in Arizona. And we'd heard, oh, he's doing so much better. And I mean, there are, I mean, a lot of optimism um, from teammates, coaches, front office people about how well he'd been looking, how much he'd been developing. And I do think. That we could see it with our own eyes. Oh, yeah. We, we could see that, yeah, he does look he does look more in, in command. He does look better. And, you know, it took a while. Um, and there, are a lot of, there. there are a lot of reasons for why he played better in the second half and at the end of halftime and all that. But, um, again, I, I'd be excited to see how, uh, how he performs in that kind of pressure-packed situation in a home environment. And Tracy, you live in LA, correct? I do. I do. I would fully expect there to be a lot of red in the stands of oh, SoFi yeah. Stadium. I would expect there to be too. Um, and I and I'll even go. Maybe we're getting too flowery, but if if after six quarters 
as an NFL quarterback, NFL starting quarterback, he was that much better in the second half. You just imagine how much better he'll be on Sunday. And then I'll also go so far as, as to say, because now I'm really just off my rocker, but I'll also go as, so far as to say that it is a high pressure game. But as far as high pressure games go, this team is nine and seven, fighting for a playoff spot. He didn't, he's not losing the Super Bowl. He's not losing the NFC Championship game. Should they not go to the playoffs? They ultimately did not go to the playoffs because of Trey Lance. They did not go to the playoffs for a lot of things that happened throughout the season. So as far as high pressure games go, I think it's relatively lower pressure. How do you like them apples? Yeah, I think it's his Super Bowl though. It is. It is his Super Bowl. Yeah. I just mean like in terms of scarring yeah. someone, yeah. like in terms of what we were talking about earlier with the scars, like, it's, you yeah. know, for him, it, it is his Super Bowl. But in terms of scars, it's an opportunity for him to play well and for them to win and be the hero. But it's also the opportunity to learn a lot and set him up for his future as a quarterback. I, I, do, I do think that, you know, you learn more from your mistakes than from your successes. Mm-hmm. And so if he gets this opportunity to play, it's going to be, it's going to be beneficial to him because either he doesn't play well and he can learn from those mistakes and, and, and kind of create, you know, kind of a prize that he's working for. He'll know exactly what he needs to work on because the Rams have studied what two quarters against the Seahawks, four against the Cardinals, four against the Texans. So that's 10 quarters. Mm -hmm. The, the, Mm -hmm. the, The Rams are looking at every snap in those 10 quarters. What does Kyle like to do with him? Where's this kid successful? They're going to pinpoint um, exactly what they need to do against him. And so that will give him a great primer, you know, going into the off season. If they win it, then he gets another game, you know, more yeah. than likely, more than likely um, would get another game in the playoffs, or he would have that success of leading a team, you know, to the playoffs. And uh, so either way, I, I think that it's, I wouldn't say it's a win-win I was just going to say, I think no, it's a win-win. It's I, a win-win for Trey. It may not be a win-win for the team, but yeah, I think it's I, a win-win. I don't win. even know I mean, if it's a win-win for, because he'll he'll have pressure. I mean, he would be, yeah. you know, maybe down the road. You know, there will be there will be stories down the road about you know how that Week 18 game, you know, in his rookie season, you know, had an impact on him and and how it changed him or you know made him more. Um, you know, determined or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. I just, I, I think it's going to be exciting to see what happens. And, and again, and, we, and we, I don't we, mean to say he's not, he's obviously a competitor and to him, it is his Super Bowl. Right. I'm just saying that there are a lot of things that have gone into them being in this position on Sunday. So it's, I just think he has so much opportunity all around to, to grow. And so I think it's a positive. Yeah, and I, I, I do saying. think that like he was in Arizona, like he was Sunday at Levi Stadium. I think the Trey Lance that we see after the game, again, assuming he he plays, Mm -hmm. it's going to be a guy that's the face of the franchise. It's going to be a guy who, if they win, he's going to be giving credit to his teammates. Mm -hmm. If he loses, he's going to take responsibility, but he'll do it in a professional and classy manner. And he'll be somebody that, um, you know, he's being groomed to be the face of the franchise. And And, I don't think he's disappointed yet. Now we have seen only a sliver, only a brief hint of what the 49ers hope to be getting from him. Um, But I'd say up to this point, they have reason to be encouraged. Oh, absolutely. I think yesterday's, I think yesterday's second half says a lot about the quarterback and the person. I just, you know, I think it could have been easy to go a different direction. Yeah. And he did not. So yeah, I think- it seems like his teammate, you know, one of the big battles. Um, I don't know if it was a big battle, but it sure seems like the veteran team. I mean, he's only 21 years old. Yeah. And and it's, um, oh, I'll, t- I'll tell you a brief story. When I was in Marshall, Minnesota, I think Trey had just turned 21. And a lot of the players were going to Vegas during the offseason program. Oh, yes. And I remember I was, that trip. And a, a family member of, Trey Lance said to me, like, I'm a little bit concerned. He's going to Vegas with all these older guys. And I, I told them, and I, you know, I was probably sticking my neck out a little bit, but I said, <laughs> I, I think everything's going to be okay. I go, I've, I've covered teams where I, if, if your son was on one of those previous teams, 
I might be a little bit more concerned, <laughs> but I said, it's a pretty good group. I, I think you'll be like impressed with kind of the, the level of character on this team. And I do think that, you know, they went to Vegas and as far as we know, there were no incidents. <laughs> by now we know. <laughs> yeah, by now we know. But I, but I also think there's like this kind of nurturing aspect of, you know, George Kittle's kind of a, he's kind of a crazy guy, but I think, you know, he certainly has his, mm-hmm. the best interests of his teammates at heart. You know, a guy like Trent Williams is a protector in mm-hmm. more ways than one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you have guys that are, you know, Fred Warner, um, mm-hmm. you know, Jimmy Ward, um, Eric Armstead, TJ Jones. I mean, I could just go on and on. And mm-hmm. the, those are mostly the defensive guys, but, you know, Kyle Juszczyk and, um, you know, Alex Mack. And again, I could just go on and on. Mm-hmm. I think that he has the benefit and the blessing, I guess I'd say, of having a really good support system, not only as players, but as individuals to kind of help nurture him into that role. Mm-hmm. And I think it says a lot about him that so early on they even wanted to mm-hmm. and that, that he went on that trip. And, and I don't know, I've, I've been very impressed with Trey from what we've seen oh, thus far. You know and I didn't mention Jimmy Garoppolo. I, you, know, you did not mention Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I'm also very impressed with Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't know that anybody could have handled this with more class than he has this yeah. entire There season. might have been some ties, but I don't think anybody could have handled it better than him. Maybe, yeah. Right. I mean, he, yeah. In fact, I, I asked Trent Williams about that last week, and he said 10 out of 10, you know, how, how Jimmy has handled this 10 out of 10. And um, again, we don't see everything. We don't know the interaction and meetings and all that or behind the scenes in the quarterback room. But it, it sure seems like uh, in a very difficult situation, um, Jimmy Garoppolo has, has handled himself with the utmost professionalism, dignity, and class. And I think you can tell in the way Trey Lance talks about Jimmy Garoppolo, it doesn't feel like lip service mm-hmm. when he talks about Jimmy Garoppolo and and having someone that has, you know, has his back and all of that. It feels like he means it. Yeah. It genuine. does feel genuine. Genuine. Yeah. yeah. So, well, on that note, that was so, that was so it, sweet and flowery and lovely. Yeah. It's, are, are we bringing the Tracy Sandler podcast or show to an end? Well, this episode, not the yeah, whole yeah, show. Yeah, we're, yeah, no, yeah, we're going <laughs> to... Well, well, I was a little bit confused at the beginning because you said, for those of you who don't know us, we cover the 49ers. So it made it sound like maybe we're, we weren't going to talk all about the 49ers. But if you're tuning into the Tracy Sandler show, it's all 49ers. Well, it depends on the week. Okay. Uh, on this particular week, it's all 49ers because it's you and I. Well, so like I said, the podcast is still relatively new. I think we're only, this is only, I think it's been on two months. So I still feel like I'm getting, you know, some new listeners. My assumption would be anybody tuning into this particular episode would definitely know who we are. It, it does depend on the week, but, you know, this is a big week for the 49ers. And I felt that was really should be the the main topic. And you know, they're a big part of the playoff picture. Much of the playoffs have set some previous episodes we've talked about, you know, more NFL plays, but a lot of that is set. This is a big week for uh, that team from San Francisco it, slash it Santa Clara. It is. And in kind of the, I mean, there are three games going on simultaneously that everybody's eyes will be on. So I believe it's one twenty-five PM Pacific mm-hmm. 49ers and the Rams. And then the Rams if the Rams lose and the Cardinals win, the Rams would fall down to the five seed. Yep. The Cardinals would become the NFC West division champ. So the Cardinals and the Seahawks kick off also at 1.25 p.m. Mm-hmm. 49ers couldn't give two flips about that game. No. The only other game that they would be concerned about only if – the scoreboard isn't looking good for them at SoFi mm-hmm. would be a game that also kicks off at 1 25 PM. And that is the saints at the Falcons and the 49ers uh, turning into some very big fans of the Falcons potentially on Sunday. Well, and Kyle Shanahan coached there. So that's probably why they'd be such big fans. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are there any 49er? I'm trying to think, were there any 49er, um, Connections on the Falcons? Um, no, I mean Mohamed Sanu played for the Falcons, and he's yeah, but on the Falcons, not the Falcons. I, 
Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm not, I don't think so. I don't want to say for sure none, but I don't think yeah. so. So, it, I mean, if you look at the odds makers, the Falcons have a better chance of beating the Saints than the 49ers have of beating the Rams. So I'm correct in, I think when we went through all the scenarios, I just want to make sure this is right. Should the 49ers lose to the Rams, but the Saints lose to the Falcons, the 49ers are in. Correct. Okay. Well. And, the, and if the 49ers then, win and the Saints win, 49ers are in. So it's like the old baseball magic number. So yeah. any, any combination of a 49ers victory or a Saints loss totaling one means the 49ers are in. This is very exciting stuff. It is. So we'll see you in SoFi. I can't wait to. Oh, you know what we didn't do? But I think we'll just do it, even though it might be a little hard. It might take us out of the 49ers. We have a segment on the show uh, at the end where we do good goat, bad goat of the week. Because goat, goat didn't meaning use, the greatest of all time, or but then the bat, the, but the so the original feeling of goat was that you were the goat, and that was not the greatest of all time. But right. now it's become greatest of all time. So we basically do a greatest of all time of the week, just of okay. the week, and then a bad goat of the week. Well, I mean the the bad one's pretty easy, isn't it? The guy who ripped it, off his jersey and threw it. I, in the stand? Yes, the bad goat is definitely Antonio Brown, and there's no, I don't think we're going to disagree on that. So like that one's super your easy. Your podcasting license would be taken away from you if you did it not would be. call him the, the goat, bad goat. Yes, correct. Um, podcasting <laughs> license. Which is- <laughs> so uh, it, or it wouldn't get renewed. That's for No, sure. it definitely would not get renewed. So then that gives us our good go to the week. We may agree on that as well, but. Uh, well, I'm just trying to think. Uh, we're talking NFL. Could be wide. anyone. It could be Fort Adders. Could be anywhere in the NFL. Could be anywhere, uh, really. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I haven't thought about this. Thanks for the thanks for the advance warning. You're welcome. That's what we like. You make it uh, a little bit of a surprise. It's does fun. it have to be? Uh, it's only NFL. It could, you know, if you'd like it to be another sport. It well, I just be. can't think of anything right now. So then, and so be, wait, why don't we do 49ers? Since we've talked about 49ers and well, our bad goat was not. I don't. I don't want to give the kid too much praise, so I'm going to try to go somewhere okay. else. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Who would be the good goat of the week? I know um, who I'm picking. Well, you know what? In this probably, I don't even know what his game was like, but I'm going to go. Um, it's just it's because it's at the top of my mind. Jalen hurts. Mm. Uh, and, and the reason is because, um, you know, a lot of questions about him coming into the NFL. And not only is is he the starter of the Eagles, and, you know, it hasn't been a pretty season for them um, all the way, but the fact that as the starting quarterback for the Eagles, he's helped that team get to the playoffs. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Jalen Hurts. Uh, And I am going to stick with 49ers, and I'm going to give it to a rookie, but not the one that you think I'm going to give it to Elijah Elijah Mitchell. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah he's, I, the toughness, you know, he he runs in a way where he doesn't he takes, you know, the thing about Frank Gore was he was always healthy. It seemed like even though in college he wasn't, mm-hmm. but he never took like big hits. You know, he always found a way to kind of take on these glancing blows. And if there's one thing that Elijah needs to improve on, it's, not it's, taking it's that because he yeah. gets walloped and he's he a tough hurt. kid. He's mm-hmm. had, I can't even name all the injuries. He's had the shoulder, ribs, knee, knee concussion. Is there are more. I think those are all of them. Yeah. But he just needs to figure out a way to be- better protect himself. And that's kind of why I think if the 49ers have an opportunity to bring back Raheem Mostert, mm-hmm. uh, that they will. I don't think Raheem's getting a multi year contract from any team out there just because of his injury history. Mm-hmm. But I think the 49ers will be looking to, you know, from what I understand, Trey Sermon is, is doing pretty well too. But um, Elijah Mitchell is, yeah, he's he's a tough kid. I just, I, I think the 49ers would hope that he doesn't have to show his toughness as often as he did here in his rookie year. Correct. But uh, kind of amazing. He's missed six games and he's only 122 yards shy of a thousand yard season, which is yeah. kind of incredible and broke a record yesterday and didn't even know it was an option until he broke it. And his teammates told him so soft spot for Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. That, that record would be the 49ers all time single season rookie rushing record, mm-hmm. which is pretty impressive. I like, I like saying that. Well, it, it's a mouthful, but it, it makes, it does sound very impressive. It does. So. Yeah. Well, with that, my friend, 
All right, we are going to bring this episode of the Tracy Sandler Show to a close. If you guys like what you heard, which I'm sure you did, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fangirl Sports Network. Talk to everybody later this week. Bye and one all. more thing, Tracy. Yes. This this podcast was so long. Now I have to go to SoFi Stadium. I think the game starts <laughs> in 15 minutes. Yeah. See you at the stadium. Bye.